Module 6, Lecture Number 4, Good Practice Examples. We will introduce some examples of participatory use of GIS. Over the last 20 years, in both developing and developed countries, we saw an increase of participatory mapping initiatives. A lot of citizens, thanks to the new technologies of Web 2.0, can now contribute in web-based social networking sites. The Web 2.0 gave a boost to the growth and prosperity of collective endeavors in site-related activities among citizens. The Web 1.0 technology was one-directional, so users could only retrieve or download the information from web pages. The Web 2.0 technology is bidirectional, allowing the users to collaborate and share the common information with each other via Internet. Google's and Microsoft's reviewers furnish new services which enables for new practices of communication with specially explicit references. According to Andrew Turner, author of the publication Introduction to Neogeography, these practices are a form of emergent neogeography. Neogeography are geographical techniques and tools used for personal activities or for utilization by a non-expert group of users, non-formal or analytical. Starting from these statements, in this module we will introduce some good practices. In 2010, the London University College launches Mapping for Change, a social enterprise to support sustainable communities through online mapping and GIS. The organization works across a range of sectors including school programs, food growth, distribution, town planning and sustainable tourism. With the purpose of creating interactive maps that help engage communities as part of a consultation process. Mapping for Change has already produced maps of actions related to climate change in London and other British cities but also it works with local schools. It developed a project called Local Schools for Local Children to form a much clearer picture about the level of degradation of the children. And with local authorities, for example, the Southwark Council commissioned an online community map to aid and support the work of the Council in its pledge to build 11,000 new homes. In the field of environmental protection and citizens' engagement, a very good example is the Global Atlas of Environmental Justice. The Atlas, EU-funded, was launched in 2014 in the framework of the Environmental Justice Organization Liabilities and Trade Project. EJOLT brought together a consortium of 23 academics and civil society representatives across different fields to promote collaboration and mutual learning. More than 100 people from 23 universities and environmental justice organizations in 18 countries plus dozens of independent collaborators from around the world have joined forces to create this resource. The project is coordinated by Professor Joan Martinez Allier and his team of ecological economists at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. The main goal of the project is putting together as many information as possible about the various environmental struggles happening all around the world in a world atlas of environmental conflicts. The EJ Atlas maps conflicts around 10 categories nuclear, mineral ores and building extractions, waste management, biomass and land conflicts, fossil fuels and climate justice energy, waste management, infrastructure built environment, tourism recreation, biodiversity conservation conflicts, industrial and utilities conflicts. 
In 2010, the London University College launches Mapping for Change, a social enterprise to support sustainable communities through online mapping and GIS. The organization works across a range of sectors, including school programs, food growth, distribution, town planning, and sustainable tourism. With the purpose of creating interactive maps that help engage communities as part of a consultation process. Any map can be embedded on a web page or shared on Facebook. The eJatlas is a database designed to be flexible and used for teaching, networking and advocacy purposes. Mapping for Change has already produced maps of actions related to climate change in London and other British cities. But also it works with local schools. It developed a project called Local Schools for Local Children to form a much clearer picture about the level of deprivation of the children. The Italian Atlas is a database in the form of a georeferenced map, representing around 100 cases of environmental conflicts, from the Vaillant to the Land of Fires, dating from 60s until 2016. It is an example of participatory map, a living and open source instrument for citizens to produce and share information on ongoing environmental conflicts. In the Italian Atlas, the cases selection process involves a range of issues. The evaluation concerning relevance of the conflict, the existing national cataloging of environmental affected areas, historical cases, the use of EJOLT categories, the geographical distribution of conflicts in all the 20 Italian regions. Once the information about each conflict are collected, these are divided into seven sections. Basic data, conflict type, project details and actors, information on the mobilization, for example, starting date, groups mobilizing and forms of mobilizations, as well as impacts, data on current outcomes, for example, what the mobilization produced in terms of outcomes for the environmental justice, the status of the project, the development of alternative proposals and an evaluation of the conflict, for example, if it was successful or not for environmental justice, and the references. Practical application of civic participation applied to environmental conflicts comes from Peru. The companies US Petroleum, the local Petro Peru and the Argentine Plus Petrol entered in indigenous territories spilling more than 900 million barrels of residual production water into the soil and into the river Pastaza, burying chemical and toxic residues resulting in the contamination of surrounding environment. In October 2006, after several failed negotiations between the government and the enterprises, the population living in the area contaminated by the Plus Petrol Oil Company organized a peaceful protest asking the block of the oil and gas properties. Following the protests, the government and the Plus Petrol enterprise signed an agreement. The document included, among other things, the establishment of an independent monitoring program to assess the level of contamination in the region. The independent monitoring team currently has 15 monitors from different communities, trained in the use of GPS cameras and video cameras. The monitores, how they are called in Spanish, spend 15 days a month to monitor the health of the river and their surrounding environment. 
for which they receive a salary of 650 soles a month, approximately 200 euros, financed by the company. The monitors are assigned to the area in which their communities are located. Every three months, they participate in a meeting to transmit the results of the monitoring process to their communities. The GIS mapping experience that we will now introduce is based on the information collected in the geoyasuni.org portal that has been created in the framework of the Prometeo project developed by the Departments of Geography and Natural Sciences of the University of Padua in the Yasuni National Park, Ecuador. In the latest years, Ecuador is facing a social and political transition starting from the decentralization of power that the state is operating. In this context, it's important to monitor and guide the concept of development that is behind this innovation to overcome a superficial industrial positivism and the naive approach to environmentalism. In this framework, the Prometeo project was aimed at investigating how to build a new development model able to integrate social rights and cultural diversity, together with the natural resources and energetic transition. The objective of the project was to realize geographical investigations and elaborate proposals to organize and manage complex territories, and at the same time contribute to develop new models of territorial development, able to guarantee a fair energetic transition, the coexistence of a plurality of territorial projects, the conservation of biodiversity, respect of human and environmental rights, as well as cultural diversities in the framework of a sustainable development. In the framework of the Prometeo project, the equipe of researchers of the University of Padua since 2012 realized several field investigations in specific areas of the Yasuni Park in particular in ZITT area, the intangible zone of the Daigeri Taromenan population, an hunter-gatherer ethnic group with no contact with the society, who lived in ZITT area since ever and has been partially superposed to the area given by the state for federal exploitation. The investigation, therefore, had the objective to support the elaboration of public policies aimed at protecting the Taigeri Taromenan groups, preventing them from contacts with the society and preserving their environment. Several cartographic representations and georeferenced maps have been produced and are available on geoyasuni.org portal. The researchers strongly believe in the importance of giving free access to the cartographic research developed in a such remote area, also taking in consideration the power that maps have in communicating information on territories that most of times are undiscovered and deliberately hidden. This is why all the maps and georeferenced representation are published under the Creative Commons license and the same authors recommend their circulation. Hello, my name is Daniel Rodik and this is module 6, Basic GIS Mapping for Citizens. In this lecture you will see two examples how GIS is used to support interactive maps primarily to enhance participation of citizens. First example is the map of solar potentials in the city of Velika Gorica in Croatia. This map is in Croatian language, but there are similar examples of solar mapping to be found on the internet. Below on the slide you can copy paste the link of the first example. The example shows the GIST-based map with locations of public and residential buildings in the city of Velika Gorica. There are 118 residential multi-story buildings and 48 public buildings on this map. This is the city center shown and the locations are painted blue. 
Main information presented is how much of the average annual solar radiation could be used to produce electricity on a chosen building, its roof. So this tool calculates the average irradiation into electricity. This kind of interactive map is aiming to promote the solar energy as a clean and local energy that can cover part of the energy needs in the city. Roofs, particularly flat ones, are very suitable for the application of the solar photovoltaics because there is no need for the additional space and the installation is very simple, it means cheaper. First, let us see basic controls on the right side menu. First one is a zoom tool, in and out. Then you can choose the background layers. Below there are two navigation tools, zoom out and back to city center, and two measuring tools for the distance and surface. The Layers menu on the right gives an option of choosing the type of the map OpenStreetMap or GIS based map. Now you can see background map based on GIS of Velika Gorica that is made for the purposes of land registry. It is a public record of the extent, value and ownership of land. Below Layers you can also click on and off to see or hide buildings or streets. On the left side there is a search menu. If one doesn't know which building to choose, search menu filters through different parameters such as building use, public or residential, roof type, flat or inclined, search perimeter, roof inclination and roof orientation west, southwest, south, southeast and east and also available roof surface. A practical application of civic participation applied to environmental conflicts comes from Peru. The companies US Petroleum, the local Petro Peru and the Argentine Plus Petrol entered in indigenous territories, spilling more than 900 million barrels of residual production water into the soil and into the river past First example is the map of solar potentials in the city of Velika Gorica in Croatia. This map is in Croatian language, but there are similar examples of solar mapping to be found on the internet. Below on the slide, you can copy-paste the link of the first example. The second example is about an interactive web page made to enable more functional participation of citizens in the process of urban planning. Specific objectives of the web page are to raise public awareness by improving the availability and understanding of spatial planning with the help of new technologies and to build a dialogue of CSOs and local government by fostering the principles of transparency and good governance in the field of spatial planning. The quote from the web page states Geographic Information System GIS, is a set of data, technologies and theories 
that places all information on the spatial component in the unique context and creates a mutually caused relationship between the object and phenomena in space is the best tool to manage data for spatial planning. The map is similar to previous one. On the right bottom you can choose background maps such as OpenStreetMap, Digital Orthophoto or Creation Basic Map. On the left menu you can choose layers. The Layers menu on the right gives an option of choosing the type of the map OpenStreetMap or GIS based map. Now you can see background map based on GIS of Velika Gorica that is made for the purposes of land registry. It is a public record of the extent, value and ownership of land. Below Layers you can also click on and off to see or hide buildings or streets. On the left side there is a search menu. If one doesn't know which building to choose, search menu filters through different parameters such as building use, public or residential, roof type, flat or inclined, search perimeter, roof inclination and roof orientation west, southwest, south, southeast and east and also available roof I have chosen open source map as a background you can check that on the right side below for example by opening the folder odlagalište odpada meaning waste disposal you can check the box locations of waste bins for separate collection. Now on the map you can see the exact locations of waste bins. Tab legend when opened will explain the symbols on the map. Using this GIS tool everyone with the internet connection can easily monitor the current urbanistic plan and using the login can easily participate and give comments to the public document. Local government will collect various questions and comments, inputs from citizens that they can incorporate in the urban plan in order to make it appropriate for the most of citizens. This is the last slide of the lecture. Thank you for your attention and stay tuned to Compass Online Course.